All right, we're here at my Vermi Hut indoor worm bin. And last time we were in here, we harvested a tray and we started a cocoon nursery. So we're gonna go check on that. And then we also gave a really good feeding of both fast and slow foods. So we'll go ahead and dig in here. And then finally, I wanna talk about how often you should feed your worm bin. And that's what we'll kind of focus on for this feeding. So let's put the cocoon nursery on here. All right, so here is the cocoon nursery. Now what I did was that tray that we harvested we put it all inside here, and then we put a little bit of strawberry and a little bit of spun bedding in here. So let's kind of see what we've got. I'm not expecting much, because that was about 11 days ago. And I kind of pull up on the strawberry. Oh, we got a couple of babies right there, kind of feasting on the strawberry. Now, I don't know if these were born in this cocoon nursery or if they were ones I didn't see when we harvested, but we'll go ahead and pull those out. In fact, I'm just going to put this whole strawberry into the vermi hut and let's kind of keep looking and see if we see any more. Now, the other thing that could be in here is bigger worms because I might not have got them all. And right there looks like a juvenile of probably a red wiggler. We'll go ahead and leave this cocoon nursery. I will put maybe another strawberry in here to bait some out, but they'll have plenty of little pieces of strawberry or little pieces of bedding here to eat. And they also will go over their castings again and eat those. So there we go, there's our cocoon nursery. All right, so let's go ahead and dig into the main attraction. And something that I wanna point out is it's been 11 days since we were in here last, and usually I'm about seven days between feedings. So one of the things I noticed is right here is where the feeding zone was, and they have actually come up and eaten some of the newspaper. They definitely like to eat their bedding also. So if you're going away on vacation or you can't get to your feedings, your normal feedings, if you have bedding, they're gonna have no problems. They are not gonna starve. So let's go ahead and get this out of the way. So let's go ahead and kind of dig in. I don't know if we'll see any worm balls in here because it's been, like I said, 11 days and they've probably eaten almost everything out, but I am seeing a little congregation of worms right here. So let's go ahead and turn it over. And oh yeah, sure enough, check it out. They are all up in here. Now we gave some apples, some bananas, which are slow foods, or the banana peels themselves are slow foods. But we also gave some kale and I think some carrots and strawberries. So they probably ate those right away. And what's left is the slow foods. And sure enough, there's a banana peel. They will eventually get to this and eat it all. And they are feasting on it right now. Let's keep digging over here. See how they did through the whole feeding zone. And yep, they are all throughout it. And you can see a good mix of bedding and castings in here. This has been on the top tray. It has been the active top tray for 19 days. So you're not necessarily gonna see a bin this far along with castings at 19 days. This is kind of a, a special deal here because I put these trays at the very bottom of this worm tower full of bedding and just kind of let them get inoculated. So they have tons of microbes before they even come up here as the top feeding tray. And the worms actually go down there as well. So one last section right here of the feeding zone and see how they're doing. And just tons of worms in here. I estimate this bin, this whole tower system, probably has three to 4,000 worms in it. And they are just doing well, eating all the foods and making lots of castings. In fact, if we come over here kind of to the top, you'll see all this dark material right here. And this is all castings. As the worms move, they just kind of poop out their end. So as they're traveling, they're making castings. So it's not like they go someplace and, and lay their castings. They're just everywhere. So in a closed bin like this with a tight lid, you are gonna get them crawling all up and down and everywhere, and then they're gonna leave their castings. And this bin has a very unique lid where the top of it is kind of a mesh of coconut fibers, and then within that lid it has air holes. They do really well, keeps the any kind of insects or flying insects out, and the worms cannot escape. But at the same time, it keeps the interior of the bin very moist without it pooling, which I absolutely love. And if you like this bin, I've got some affiliate links that you can look and see prices and that kind of thing, but I've really enjoyed this worm tower. So let's kind of go through here and aerate the rest and see if there's worms where we didn't feed. All throughout this bin, there are different ages of worms, and we actually have two different types. We have red wigglers, and then we have blue worms, which are about the same length, but they are skinnier than the red wigglers. Their clitellum doesn't bulge out. 
which is kind of the two ways to figure out what you have there. Let's go to the front and then I'm gonna air that out and then we'll set up the feeding zone and kind of talk about how often you should feed. As I am setting up the feeding zone, let's kind of talk about how often you should feed. I would say first off, if you're watching my videos, I feed about every seven to eight days. And for me, that works out because I like to freeze my food and sometimes chop it, do experiments, that kind of thing. It also works out for the size of my bins. If you have a really big bin, you can feed on one side and let it go for a month. And within that time, you might get some overfeeding areas or even some fermentation or pockets of anaerobic activity. As that happens, the worms will go somewhere else and then they will slowly come over and eat that food as it's decaying and they will take care of it. So if you're going on vacation, you got kind of a large bin, no problem. You can leave them to their own devices eating that food for a month. Now a smaller bin or a tiny worm bin, you're probably going to need to feed that more often because you really can't just put a whole bunch of food in a three gallon bin and expect it to just run normal. With that much food, you are definitely going to get anaerobic conditions. You'll probably get massive mite and potworm blooms and the worms might actually try to flee if you overfeed there. So so that's kind of the first consideration is how big has your bin? The second consideration is how much time do you have? You know, if you're someone that just wants to put the food in and forget it, then maybe once a month will work for you and your bin's big enough. But if you're someone that likes to observe your worms and see how they're doing, then maybe once a week is good. And then if you're someone that just wants to put the food in, the food scraps in as you create food scraps, then you can feed every day but just smaller quantities. Obviously, if you're feeding every day, then just very little food scraps. If you're feeding once a week, about the amount that I'm putting in. And if you're feeding once a month, well, you're gonna need to put a month's worth of food scraps in. And right here, I always like to add some fresh bedding underneath all the feedings that I give. So size of the bin, how much time do you have? How are you generating your food scraps? And then another thing is, do you wanna have a lazy worm bin where you just want to put your food scraps in and forget about it? Or do you wanna take the time to freeze your food scraps, chop them up, that kind of thing? So also your preference on your preparation time for food scraps will determine how much you feed. And then the last thing that I think is important is your personal preference. If you don't wanna be dominated by a worm bin and worrying about it constantly, or if you have multiple bins, then maybe you wanna feed every once in a while, but if you enjoy getting into your worm bin, or it's something that helps you wind down during the day and you've got four or five worm bins or even one, then certainly feed them more often. So size of your bin, personal preference, how you generate food scraps, how you wanna prepare your food scraps, all can determine how often you feed your bin. So it's up to you to decide. Feed it every day, every three to four days, every week or every month. But hopefully you've got some clues on what you need to do to determine how often you should feed because every single one of them works. All right, so here's what we have in mind to feed. And this is the top trays third feeding. So I've got a pretty good mix of slow and fast foods, again, to continue to entice them up, but also to have food to eat now and a little bit later. We pull this right out of the freezer. Typically I'll leave it out to thaw for a little bit, but we've put uh, area down here so there's not worms underneath it and we'll gently put it back over and I'll probably put some more bedding on top but you're gonna hear it kind of crunch so we'll do banana peels we've got some apples strawberries carrots in here some more banana peels strawberries now strawberries are really good fast foods although the top is more of a slow food potato peels go pretty quick in my bins and then apples, they absolutely love them and I see them swarming over them, but they actually are a slow food. They take a while for them to eat. Some more there, and then just kind of empty this out. All right, so there's the food scrap portion of their feeding. And then lately, I've also been giving them some pulverized oats, and that is because I let some expire. In fact, they've been expired for four years, so no chance that this was gonna go into anybody in my family's body. So I always give a little bit of this and I'll be continuing to do this for several months because I have a lot of them. And then the last little bit of food I give them is used coffee grounds. We have a Keurig and we make single cups of coffee at a time and then I just dump it in here. You can see this doesn't quite look like coffee grounds because it's a little bit lighter and that's because mold starts growing on it. I put it into this container and then I'll put the lid on and shake it up and what I find is that there's mold underneath and that is absolutely fantastic for the worms. So the Coffee grounds are actually getting a little bit broken down before they even go in here. And both with the pulverized oats and the coffee, I just kind of give a little light dusting 
so that it doesn't clump up when it gets moisture on it. And then finally, because worms have gizzards to aid in their digestion by grinding their food up, I add a little bit of pulverized eggshells that I pulverize in my little mini blender, and I've got affiliate links for that too. Between the mini blender and the paper shredder, the 12 sheet cross cut shredder that does wonders on cardboard and newspapers. Those are kind of the my go-to equipment for any of my worm bins. So pretty good feeding here. Let's put a little bit of bedding back on top and worms need both for a really healthy worm bin. And then we'll kind of bury it up here. And if you guys have enjoyed this video, I appreciate you hitting the like button and consider subscribing. I've got a couple other bins, a tiny worm bin and an outdoor worm bin where I do different experiments and feed them in different ways and in fact harvest in different ways. So go ahead and check that out. And I think what we're gonna do, it's really worked out pretty well, is on the top, we are going to put a layer of pulverized oats. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, in go our pulverized oats. And on top of the pulverized oats, I'm just gonna add just a sheet of newspaper. Again, you saw at the very beginning that they kind of ate through a portion of the newspaper where there was food. So I always just like to put that on top. It also helps with the moisture that kind of evaporates up. It hits the newspaper and then goes back down. So again, notice very light coating of the pulverized oats. I will tell you in about two days, the worms will have eaten all these pulverized oats because it's just so thinly put up there. So we'll attempt to puzzle piece this newspaper topping back on top and we will kind of complete this worm feeding and I'll try and get in here in about another seven days. That's kind of my routine. But if I don't, if it takes me another week, you know, 14 days, not a problem. They've got plenty of bedding to eat and they've got plenty of food. So I hope this video has been useful to you and I hope everybody's having a great day. So happy vermicomposting everybody. Take care now.